too. I can't believe this is happening right now. Stanley Cup champion Nathan McKinnon sitting across from me. Congratulations. How does it feel when I say Stanley Cup champion? That's crazy. Yeah, it feels, crazy. Good. It feels good, man. Uh, you didn't really know if you'd ever win one. Uh, it's the hardest thing to win in sports, and we got it done, so it uh, feels great. I remember last time you were here, you were talking about playing hockey on the, the pond, eating cold pizza, sometimes by yourself. And Are these the things that you're thinking about back then when you're eating the cold pizza? The, is the cup? Yeah, I, I just think your life kind of goes through your whole head uh, when you when you win. Um, it was such a whirlwind. Um, I'm still kind of digesting it, I think, that it actually happened. Because, um, you know, you get back into your summer training, you know, skating, and it's just back to normal. But uh, it's a little different, and a little weight off your shoulders. Um, but, yeah, I think about, you know, me and my dad growing up, the uh, bond we have and what we had and um, – you know, that's the biggest thing I thought about was just, you know, he put the stick in my hand and he sacrificed a lot of money and time for me. Um, he recognized I had something and um, that was the biggest thing that stuck out to me. That's awesome. No, that's great to hear. The, um, the mentality going into training camp. You know, we talked last time about how you, you've gone through the, the part of losing and not making it to the cup finals. And going into training camp this year at the start, w w was it a different attitude? Was it a different energy in the room? Or, or was it the same as every other year at the, I guess, when would training camp be September? Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was definitely, it was very intense, I think. Um, you know, it was three straight years losing in the second round. And that was kind of the thing behind our team. Um, and it was... Uh, it was win or bust, you know, for us this year. That, that's what it was. It was either we win or it's a failure. Um, that's the mentality. Maybe if we lost in the final, uh, I don't know. But that was, yeah, it was a, a tough camp. Um, but we're a really, really positive group. It wasn't, um, I don't know. It was good, good, good energy, you know, around the team, a lot of positivity. We were feeling good. We felt like we, we were going to win and we could win and, um, but that was definitely the mentality of just, um, yeah, that this is it. This is what we're going for. And um, all the moves we made during the season, uh, we don't have any first-round draft picks. And that's how that's what every team does to win, Tampa, Pittsburgh, Washington. No one picks in the first round anymore. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what our ownership, Joe and C-Mac, they believed in that. So, yeah, it worked out. Throughout the year, you know, you have ups and downs. I know you were hurt for a little bit throughout the year as well, and there's so many things that are going through your head. Staying even keel throughout it, was that difficult knowing that, like you just said, it's kind of ride or die, this is it? Was it difficult to think about that, or did you just stay even keel and you were able to, to focus, I guess, on the playoffs? It was hard. It, it just, we were kind of running away with the West, and um, yeah, it was... Uh, we lost like six or seven to finish the year. We were just kind of like coasting into the playoffs and uh, <laughs> we were kind of worried like, oh man, like we better pick it up here. Like, uh, but we had some guys here. We were like kind of resting guys. Like Miko was a little sick, so we just didn't play him. Yeah. Um, I didn't play the last couple games. We hurt? No, just just, just, just didn't want to get, didn't want to risk it. Yeah. So it was just a weird end of the season. You know, some teams are scratched and clawing their way in and, fighting for home ice or fighting to make the playoffs. And we, we were like 15 points up on second in the West. So we were just kind of hanging out. Uh, but yeah, it was just kind of like, oh man, we better uh, figure it out here. Uh, um, you never know. Like there's upsets. It's hockey. It's not basketball. So yeah. there's upsets. We're playing Nashville, really good team. And they had a great last 15 games. I think they beat us like two to three times in the regular season. So, um, but we're a bunch of gamers, man. A lot of competitive guys and, um, yeah, obviously, we know the results, but it was uh, just funny, funny how it worked. Well, it's, speaking of funny, when Sutter goes, whoever plays Colorado in the first round, it's a waste of eight days. In your head, like, I, I know when, like, Canada plays in the world, or maybe that's not the best example right now. When Like, whenever there's a tournament and, uh, you know, teams are doing really well, they need to go through some adversity. And when you guys sweep Nashville to start, it's like, oh, okay, you guys need to go through a little bit something. At least that's what all of us were thinking. They need to have a little bit of fight in them before they can go on to do what they do. Were you guys thinking that? Like when Sutter said it's a waste of eight days, what, what are you thinking? Well, yeah, you're just thinking like, who knows? Um, we're not buying into that. And okay. I don't know if he really even meant it, you know, with him. I don't know if he was <laughs> trying to like jinx us or what, but um, 
he turned out to be right, I guess. Uh, we did win in seven days. Um, and uh, But it's so close. It's, it's, it's really close. We win in OT um, game two, and that can go either way. Um, we had a great you know, third game one, and then we're down in the fourth game against Nashville. Um, so there was like, there wasn't a ton of adversity. The real adversity comes when you actually lose a game. And I think um, that St. Louis series really got us prepared for the final. Um, just the second round demons, you know, that people, will, you know, we, we uh, it was 1-1 one, one going to St. Louis. We get up 3-1. We had a great two games in the road. And then we blow a three-goal lead at home in game five. And we're just like, oh, my God. <laughs> After that amazing goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, too bad, but uh, <laughs> too bad. Um, but, yeah, we uh, we blew a 3 nothing lead, and crazy bounces were going on, like how they were scoring. It was crazy. Um, then you're going on the road for game six, and you lose game six, you have a game seven, and anything can happen in game seven. Uh and that was huge for our, our, our team. Um, you know, it's tough, man. Obviously, we 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 make a lot of money and everything, but it's still the same. You know, we're we're terrified of losing Game Six, but you have to put that to the side and um, just that cohesiveness we had in our, in our group and the trust we had in each other. And um, it was a dominant win. I know that we only won three two. But we all played them. It was like forty-two to twenty shots. Like we were, we had a really good game on the road, and um, you know, Comfort gets two, and, and Helmer scores with like four seconds left to win it. So, um, just needing everyone to win is is so important. The depth you have to have, and um, yeah, it was uh, that really got us ready uh, for sure. Speaking of winning on the road, you, you closed out every series on the road. Mm -hmm. What's with that? I don't know. I just think for for our team, um, we just felt we just felt a little better. No pressure at home. You know, you, you feel like you have to put on a bit of a show. You feel the buzz. Um, you feel um, there's some more pressure there. I think. And we also had ten comeback wins in the playoffs. We we're down Did you ten, ten? ten times, um, and that felt good too. Um, I found a little bit when we'd get up and we get on our heels a little bit especially in that game five against St. Louis. And when we're down, we just went, went and played really aggressive and pushed and pushed. And no one could handle that when we were pushing and and being aggressive and assertive. And um, so that felt good for us. And and actually in, in game six in Tampa, we were down one and we were all like, this is good. Like we felt good after the first, like no pressure anymore. Like we're just going to go and put it on them because now they have to defend the lead and that's harder. It's definitely harder. That's wisdom. That's yeah. for you to sit here and say that that's wisdom. That's yeah. We all thought that we all it, thought that it, like the whole playoffs, like when we were down. Yeah. And, and I, I think too, in, in, uh, I think it was game four in, in Edmonton. We we're playing like playing like shit. Uh, we we're down three, one going to the third and just like, <laughs> no one was really talking and this, like everyone's miserable. Then I think Gabe and I just started like, saying like let's just go try let's just go play and then everyone starts you know feeling better and feeling better and we scored i think we scored like four goals in the in the third and we won ot yeah. and lekin and wins it but um it's just so hard to defend a lead at home in the playoffs it's so hard um if if you just want the other team to go away and we knew that they're going to be on their heels if they lose this game that they go home and it, it's a it's a hard thing to to stay aggressive and, and be comfortable with the puck and make, make all the right plays when there's a lot on the line. And especially at home, I think for our group, at least, mm. uh, there's just less pressure. I want to go back to that, the comment about game six and, uh, going into the room down one, nothing. You, you had an incredible, this shift where Stamco scored, you had an incredible shift. You were going balls to the wall. You, you, it was a great shift, but it just somehow squeaked out to Stamkos and, uh, it, put in the back of the net and I looked right at you the camera went right at you and you, you, you might have like looked down but you, you could see you were just breathing heavy and you, you it just you looked very not pissed off just oh, again this guy and then you go back into the dressing room and nhl.com did a great uh what do they call it? behind the scenes quest to the cup yeah. and you're in the room after the first period you got your shirt off you got the ice bag on the back your head is looking down and for you to sit here and say like everyone in the room had the exact same 
game plan going into the second period. That's very cool to uh, to 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 hear because looking at the TV and looking at that Quest of the Cup thing on YouTube, it didn't look like that yeah. at all. So that's where it can be a little sometimes like the media and yeah, they they don't know anything sometimes and. So the camera always comes in around nine minutes on the clock and we get to the dressing room at like 18. So we're all talking. Whenever the camera comes in. Sorry, say that again. The so behind the scenes people yeah. like ESPN, TNT, yeah. they come in the room at like nine minutes on the clock. Oh, like before you go out on the ice. Sorry. So we go yeah. at two. Okay. They come in at nine because Betsy comes in at like 838 to talk. Um, and there's a mic in there and I don't, I'm not going to talk to the team in front of a fucking camera you know, to be a hero and yeah. show everyone what a great leader I am. So, and no one really did. We, so we, we'd all, we, we had a great conversation and guys are saying their piece uh, from 18 to nine. And then once the camera comes in, everyone just goes quiet. And I'm just like looking down, <laughs> like, you know, that's, that's how I, I just, that's how, how I am, I guess. That's how everyone really was. Uh, I don't know. I just don't want to be that guy to, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's I, fair. I don't, I don't need to make it like an inspirational movie with the camera on me and so I, we we're all feeling good though yeah really good i was feeling great going into the second period um well you bounced back you got yeah, the goal felt, yeah and that first shift too they uh so when miko passed it to me with like 10 seconds in i hit i went i got my own rebound and i hit the like the knob of his stick that's why i looked in the air yeah, yeah, I know. I know yeah, what you're talking about. But yeah. they said I missed the net, and I was frustrated. Like, they just don't know anything. <laughs> they just don't know anything. Like, I'm not frustrated. I hit the knob of his stick. You know how, you know what it's like. It's awful. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just down, and I picked the top left corner, hit the knob, and that's why I looked up. So, so that's what it was. That's why okay, I looked up. Okay. Like, oh, okay. like yeah. damn, that was so close. Not like, oh, I can't score. You know, I yeah. wasn't thinking that. So. Yeah, but you had a great shift. Like, just yeah, I was giving yeah, it. Feeling good, man. So. Oh, how do you feel right now? You might, are you tired still? Uh, no, not too bad. A um, couple weeks training again, and um, I feel, yeah, skating again yeah. with uh, Sid and the guys, and yeah, feeling pretty good. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Two-part question. Oh, we'll go with the first question. Um, sure. That offside slash not offside, Jeff's a Edmonton guy. When Makar scored that and he pushed it forward, that delay was what? 10 minutes it was trying, long yeah really what long. were you doing on the bench did you get to see it on the uh the ipad Do, um no i you could i just i didn't even look you did you're not focused no, on it because at the end of the day if they call it a goal or not there's no difference um at at that point you know what i mean so yeah. um yeah i, I don't know <laughs> well it's, it's fair i just no, I, the, the, I, I saw it after obviously i saw it and I guess he didn't have control technically, but it's it's a weird rule, man. I get why Edmonton would be upset about that for sure. Okay, I get it. Yeah, and so part two to that question was it, this kind of pissed me off throughout the playoffs. Like, there's there's always blame on the refs, and sometimes you know they they do have a big outcome in the game, not totally, but you know they have an outcome on the game. And I, I noticed that uh, some players were getting on them, some players weren't, whatever. But was that a message inside your dressing room of? Boys, leave the refs alone. Let's play the game because that can distract you. Like Stamkos wasn't happy a couple times. There, there was definitely some times where mm -hmm. it, it came up. But was that ever a message in the room? Boys, leave the refs alone. Let's play the game. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's just, it's just distracting if uh, you know you give your energy and attention to them. And when you when you get angry, you waste energy and your legs get a little heavier. <laughs> and you know it's tough to to be angry at the refs the whole game and and, and stick to what you have to do. So. We weren't perfect at all, but we we tried our best to leave them alone as much as we could. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah. I want to go back into the season here. I don't even know how you feel about this, but the Olympics. Do you feel like you're a little – are are you a guy that wants to put on that jersey and, and get a gold medal? I don't want to say it got taken away from you this year, but you didn't go. How do you feel about all that? Or did you want to stay in Colorado and, I guess, focus just on winning a cup? Um. Yeah, I don't know. I was kind of – I don't know. Either way, I was cool with it. Um, just to some of the stuff you heard of what it was going to be like in China yeah. with COVID. And it was a lot. Um, you couldn't go to other events. Your family couldn't come over. No fans. So it would have been, you know, I didn't, honestly, I didn't really, I didn't care a whole lot. I was so immersed in our own season and our going for a run for the cup too. So um, I think the next one's in Italy. So it sh should be good there. 
Um, good food there. Too. Yeah, yeah, it should be good, but it all worked out, you know. Who knows if we would have had a lot of guys going to Olympics too, more than other teams. So it's a, that's a lot of jet lag coming back, and what if someone got hurt over there, you know? So yeah, um, it was a good year for our group to not to go, I guess. Yeah, well said. Yeah. One thing I really liked about your, I don't want to say maturity, but just your whole demeanor, one aspect during the – press conference during Edmonton, uh, Colorado at the very beginning, they kept going, Nate, McK- Nate, uh, McDavid, Nate, McDavid, Nate, McDavid. And you went up there and said, dry You went up there and said, Kane, you went up there and said, Kadri. And you kept mentioning other players in the series that had an impact on, uh, uh, on the game. And I love that about you. And I love that you did that. W- was that a, a goal all along? Just making sure to spread a little light on other ple- people, or is that just who you are as a person to, to, to mention other people? Yeah, a bit of both. I was just kind of sick of hearing about it and we had like nine days off after the series so you'd see a lot of it on um instagram or whatever i guess yeah. i didn't have instagram but uh whatever you just see it see a lot of it you get texts about it and um i was getting asked about it and uh i just didn't really want to talk about it um i don't think he cares about playing against me and you know he just wants to win. And it was Colorado versus Edmonton. It wasn't two guys going at it. It's yeah. hockey, you know. So uh, that's how I felt. And um, it's kind of say what's on my mind. So Yeah, you're good at that. Like the, yeah. the lower escrow thing. I was, yeah. <laughs> that was good. That, that was true. I'm like, hopefully, yeah, the ratings go up and we get more money. So that's it. <laughs> well, it was great. It was, yeah. uh, it was like, man, you, you entertained everyone here in this room and yeah. across Canada, everyone listening for the – how long were playoffs? Two months? Two, and you looked like a Ferrari. Like you looked like a well-oiled machine out there. There was no, I didn't see a, a false note in how you played out there. You looked incredible. You put, I got your stat line here, 13 goals, 11 assists, 24 points in 20 games. Stay humble. How did it feel putting those numbers up and, and helping the team, I guess, get the Stanley Cup? Yeah, I think the the biggest thing for, for myself, I just wanted to play really good uh, defensive hockey and um, really good two-way hockey, I think. That's what I improved at a little bit more than other other playoff runs. Um, I had better numbers than some other playoff runs, but I think the complete game that we all tried to play, and I knew I had to step it up a little bit in that department. Um, you know, just try to shut guys down best I can, and um, you know, our line won every matchup and uh, throughout the whole playoffs. Uh, me, Gabe, and Val. So yeah. Um, yeah, I know those two guys are awesome defensively. I had to step it up a little bit and just play an awesome two-way game and allow uh, you know other guys to get some good matchups and get some um, yeah favorable matchups, ozone um, starts and um, you know play against second line, second D pairs. It's a big difference going from the first D pair to the second D pair mm. um, on the road at home. So uh, yeah, we, uh, we we had a great run. I thought you mastered, not that you haven't already, but you were so good in the F3 position. You were so great coming high. I try to do it in beer league. I can't do it, but <laughs> you, you, you were just always open. In the NHL, it's so quick, but somehow you just had, you know, wings spanned around you for you to get a shot off. Did you go, I was wondering, did you go through a lot of video to find your spaces in that F3 spot to fire at home? Yeah, I do that a lot, I think. Um how, how a lot of teams defend now, everyone swarms a lot and they get their center duplicating. Um, and that's who's covering the F3 yeah. is the is their center. And if he's in the corner, there's a lot of space up high. Um, so when I see a battle happening and I, I see we have possession, I try to find that open ice up high. And um, yeah, it works out because everyone kind of plays a, a similar style. Yeah, you, you did really well in that position. Same on the power play on the half wall. You, you guys moved the puck so well with Makar. And going back to um, a couple of years ago when we talked about Makar and how good he was, do you think he's gotten better from two years ago to now? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's night and day. I think. Really? Yeah, I just think the way he uh, – I think his physical tools are the same, but the way he uses guys is uh, is night and day better. Um, not that he wasn't good before, but I think his hockey sense has got a lot better. Um, you know, his touch uh, – um, his decisions about the blue line and, and whether he's going to shoot or, or pass and location of his passes, everything's everything's amazing with him. And obviously his his physical stuff is off the charts as well. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's anyone better than him right now. He's, uh, he's a freak. Yeah. He's a freak. Did yeah. the team have an issue with him going to pick up his award and then coming back to play game five after? Or boys were just like, whatever. 
Like, no, did no. he ask anyone? No, no. He just a, went and got yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I mean, he won the Norris. You got to go. Gotta, I guess. Gotta, I don't know. I just, gotta go he had a game the next day. Yeah, no. He's He doesn't care, though. A guy like that, he's <laughs> he's we're not worried about him being focused. So, yeah, he's a, he's a super mentally tough person. Um, yeah, very even keel, super humble. And, yeah, he's uh, – we weren't worried about him uh, – not focused for game four, I guess it was. Yeah, it was. You guys were something to watch on the power play. You're zipping it. Looked great. Oh yeah, how was the ice in Florida for the power play? It was okay. Yeah. How yeah, was it? Yeah, it was okay. It wasn't bad. Yeah, we. Uh, yeah, we were buzzing, for sure. Okay, I heard different. Okay, yeah, I didn't mind it. Okay. Yeah. I guess if you pass it hard enough, it, it gets there. It gets yeah. through all the chips. Maybe with guys with bad hands don't like oh, the ice. Boy, you know? Oh boy. There's you a got trip. good hands. Any ice is good. <laughs> I wanted to no know problem. what's that? No problem. Yeah, it was all good. <laughs> um, did you talk to Sid at all during uh, the cup run, or did you keep your phone away? Yeah, I, ta- I talked to him. Yeah, um, yeah, I remember. You know, after uh, I guess in the final when we lost Game Five at home, uh, it was that was a tough one, man. The cups in the building, um, just heartbreaking. Just truly heartbreaking to lose it, and you, but you have to move on quickly and. Um, I always ride the bike after every game. I'm riding the bike after game five. I'm just like, man, like, this is awful. Like, I just, we could be celebrating the cup right now. I'm on a bike. Like, just wanted to, <laughs> yeah, just miserable, man. Just miserable. Some things are going through my head. Rage, being sad, like, just like, oh, my God. Um, But, yeah, I talked to, I talked to Sid the next day. They were up 3-1 against the Sharks uh, when they won there in 16, and, at home, they lose game five, and they, you got to move on quick. You have a day in between each game, and um, and they end up winning. And we had an awesome team meeting um, the night before game six with uh, Cogliano. It said a lot, and it was it was inspiring, you know, hearing a guy like that talk. Um, you know, it's it's tough, man. You're in a vulnerable state. You know, you're getting up in front of 25 men and speaking from the heart and that's that was really cool about our team is there was no judgment with you know anyone could talk and um you know you didn't feel like guys weren't on the same page or they didn't agree with you or whatever it was uh it was great everyone felt very comfortable around each other i think that was a big part of our group you know the resilience we had um and yeah we just knew we were gonna win we just knew it after that wasn't no one was nervous before game six like no one. It was just everyone felt great. We just knew we were gonna win, and I wish I could. That's <laughs> yeah. It was, wow. it was awesome, man. I've, I've, game five, we all could have puked. You know, <laughs> it was the longest day ever. And driving in the rink, you see a million jerseys everywhere, banners, and people are flying in. You know, no people. I don't know how many people I knew flew in for that game, and it's just a lot. And on the road, it's just like nothing. You know, it's just like, it's just quieter and it's all their fans. They they have the pressure now, you know, they have to win at home. And um, yeah, we, uh, I think we went nine and one on the road. So the only road game we lost was in the final game three and nine and one on the road is crazy. That is nuts. Yeah, it's crazy. So that's just kind of shows everyone on that team how, you know, how competitive and, and we're all gamers. So, yeah. Yeah. Did you say anything in that meeting with Cogliano? Yeah, yeah. I, I just said how I felt because I, you know, I think, um, you know, it just felt like a heavy day, and um, it was it was a hard day and uh, a hard game to play in, and we all felt it, and we're all on the same page. So, uh, yeah, nothing too crazy though. Did you have fun throughout the whole thing? It looks like fun on TV. I'm sitting right behind you watching on TV, having a beer. It looks like a great time. But playing, different ball game. And you, your whole life, you're eating the cold pizza and you want that. You want it. But did you have fun or, or was it, I don't want to use the word stressful, mm-hmm. but was it work? It was both. It was both. I think you get in such a rhythm, though. I felt like I could have played for another six months. Uh, it was it was awesome, man. It was so, it was so great. Um, but... When it, when you got to the final, it got a little. You know, when you lose game five, you're just like, oh my god! Like, you know, you might never get back here. Uh, it's it's so hard to get to that point. Uh, a lot a lot of things have to go right, and um, so I think 
you just really want to take advantage of the moment, but you can't do that by being scared or, or you know, having fear based motivation. You yeah. know, you got to do it from the right place. And, uh, that's what we had. And it, it was hard to, hard to find that, I think, but, um, yeah, it was, it was both. I think it was stressful. It, obviously it's stressful, but I think we all had the time of our lives. Yeah, absolutely. Cause you know, you, you work so hard you, to get there and you're there, you have to look around, you mm-hmm. have to enjoy it. Yeah. And I think what we said too, like we're not, we wouldn't trade places with anyone in the world, you know, like we're obviously the, the result is, can be a little scary, but you have to lean into that and just go for it. And you just felt so alive, the, the emotions either way. And, uh, yeah, it was it was so cool. Yeah. yeah, coming out of the tunnel with the lights off right before like the puck dropped, or before O Canada, or sorry, the national anthem. It just the arena was going, just bumping. It, I couldn't imagine how fast your heart was bumping, just skating around there a couple yeah, laps. Just it, it was wow. great. Everyone had their light on, and um, yeah, we had such a loud building. It was the loudest building we played in all playoffs for sure. It was uh, it was crazy. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah, that's what Newey said in the interview with a, a couple beers during the parade. He goes, I played everywhere in Colorado. It's the best place to play here. The yeah. best fans in the world. Yeah. So, <laughs> great parade, by the way. Yeah, Fantastic. He had a few beers, I think. A few beers. Yeah, he, was, <laughs> he was in one. <laughs> the, the video when you took a sip from the cup in the dressing room to, and you had the smile on oh, your man. face. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was the best, one of the best parts of winning was that hanging out in the room with all the guys. And it was just us in there for like two hours. It was just us. And, yeah, everyone's chugging out of the cup and just telling stories and a couple guys did speeches. Betsy, it was just, that was really cool. Um, it was nice winning on the road as well because if we it was, if we won at home, we would have probably taken it to a bar or who knows what would have happened. But at home or on the road, we had a big like meeting room, like conference room and all the families and friends who came. So we just hung out together and... Uh, yeah, there was no fans around. It was just us. So that was that was pretty cool that way. No, that's great. Yeah. No, to be able to have that experience with the boys and not have any distraction, I couldn't imagine. Mm-hmm. Great time. Um, I, I want to go back to a moment where I think you guys got a little bit closer. I could be wrong, but uh, the Cadre situation in St. Louis, I can't believe stuff like that even happens. But it, And for him to come back and get a hat trick the next day, did the team come a little bit closer after that moment? Yeah, I, th- I think so. Yeah, it was... Uh... It was crazy, man. It, you know, it felt like we're 50 years ago. You know, some of the things being said, it was, it was, uh, it was wild. Um, whether you thought the hit was dirty or not, I don't think someone's race or anything has anything to do with it. So, um, but Nas took it as fuel, and for him to get a hat trick, uh, you know, in Game Four, like, <laughs> like, it was crazy, crazy, man. crazy. Like, um, yeah, it was. Uh, he, that just shows his mentality, though. Um, and that was definitely inspired our whole group. And, um, you know, obviously he know, Nas knew that we're all there for him and we're with him. And for him to dominate that game and get a hat trick was, uh, you know, it could be a movie about that one day, you know, like documentary with what, 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 what he went through and um, definitely inspired everyone in the room. Yeah, it was a great story. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, and speaking of Kadri, you think of injuries and some of, did you see the injury reports that came out? Well, obviously you knew Colorado's injuries, but you look at Tampa's injuries as well. It's pretty crazy what you guys played through. Did you have anything that was wrong during while you were playing? Um, I broke a finger, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Um, I broke it though, like, uh, a month or two before the playoffs. So, oh yeah. Just lingering. When I saw you lifted the cup, it almost looked like you had like a bite mark on your hand. Yeah, I know. I uh, that picture of me and EJ like hugging. Yeah. So we hugged, and we were just gonna like hug then go, and then he fell backwards <laughs> as I was hugging him. So my hand like smashed the ice. I still have like a little scar. Let me see. You can just see it. Uh, yeah, you can still kind of see. That's like, a. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's going away or what, but didn't even feel it. Yeah, it was, didn't care at all. Yeah, it was. It was just funny. I caught an injury after we yeah. won. <laughs> it's like, damn. How light did the cup feel when you lifted it? It must have felt like a feather. It was actually kind of heavy. No, <laughs> it was, I thought I had one. It, no, it was heavy, man. I remember how tired I felt. I was out there for like three and a half minutes to finish the game. I didn't. I didn't want to change. 
I'm like, if they're tying it up, like I'm, I'm out here for it. Like I didn't want to change. Like, um, I ended up changing with like 20 seconds left and we won, but I was so tired. Uh, <laughs> you get so happy and excited and then you drop a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Gabe and Gabe was like, man, it was kind of heavy. And I was like, Oh no, hopefully I can lift it over my head. Like, <laughs> Uh, Can you imagine? Yeah. No, like, sorry, boys. Here's uh, the next it one. It <laughs> felt good when it, when it got up there, but um, yeah, just best feeling ever. Absolutely. What uh, you were saying um, in the room afterwards, you guys had two hours by yourself, like with no any media or anything like that. So the game plan, do you guys go right back to Colorado or do you stay the night in Tampa and then yeah. head back? How, do, how does that work afterwards and like the parade, the scheduling of everything? Yeah, like we probably got... We probably left the dressing room at like 2, 2 a.m. Awesome. And then went back to the hotel and stayed up most of the night and then got on a bus and flew home and uh, had our own team events throughout the week and had the parade on a Thursday. Uh, and then, yeah, it was, uh, it's been, it's been a lot. I need a couple saunas here. <laughs> You're a sauna uh, guy too? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love, nice. I love the sauna. Yeah, yes. But I need to keep sweating a little bit. Yeah. It's been a lot. Yeah. That's uh, my theory. I hate working out, but I love sweating. So yeah. someone said the sauna, uh -huh. that's me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, that's uh, that's awesome. The For the parade, talk about an experience. The whole city of Denver just coming out for you guys. How, how nice was that to have, to be embraced by everyone? Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, we started at the rink, and there was like, 30 people around and we're like oh <laughs> this might not be very good like oh the fire trucks yeah the yeah, fire yeah, trucks yeah, yeah. there's just like a few people on the side of the road by the rink and we're like oh okay like that's not as great as we thought it'd be and then yeah. we got through the main intersection there was like tens of thousands of people and it was uh and we had the cup the whole time yes on the parade yeah. so selfishly that was awesome people just went insane when they saw the cup um but that was probably the best day of my life i think the cup parade wow. uh that man it was uh it was special it was everyone was like i thought people would come and just take some pictures and give a wave and but people were so fired up people were like on top of the like, on top of uh stoplights and hanging over to their windows and like climbing up on things and just going crazy just going crazy and um we went down there and shotgunned a few beers with them and like Gave them high fives, and it was uh, it was amazing. Byram almost got arrested. They thought yeah, he was that a fan. Was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like a he looks like a fan though. So he had no. He had he's no, only twenty one. So yeah. Oh, is he's yeah, young? He's eh? young. Yeah, he's like a yeah. He's young. Did he have a fa any facial hair for the playoffs? I knew he kept his for the. Not much. Yeah, and it's yeah. like straight blonde, and he might have shaved it off too for the parade. And yeah, yeah he was uh, yeah. I get why the cop. Mist mistook him for a, for yeah. a fan <laughs> <laughs> and he ran the, the best part was he ran away like uh yeah. on super bad when the mclovin runs away from the cop he like does a little nerdy run he did the exact same yeah, run. I know, I know. <laughs> it was yeah, it was a great parade it was yeah. fun um how nice was it ha or not i don't want to say nice how was it like i knew sab and falkenham went up and you had your family there as well did you how, how did you feel about that aspect of everything because they say if you have your family and your friends there just make sure everyone's good and everyone's set because you, you know you want to play the game you don't want to have to think about too much what did you like having your parents and friends there how did you maneuver that side of it all yeah i'm just i mean with with ian and ryan coming up i can just be like i don't feel any pressure to see them you know yeah like and they, they know that, which is nice. I don't feel pressure. I have to, like, go to a dinner or, like, you know, I can be, like, get out of my face, you know, and they'll just, like, all right, cool, like, see you later. Sab goes and finds yeah. Charles, Bar Charles Barkley and yeah. the boys now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sab doesn't remember that picture being taken, though. I don't think <laughs> you see his eyes. Uh, but, uh, um, yeah, it was awesome. Like, all the parents and, you know, they're hanging out with my parents and uh, Charles Barkley's there, like, every night at the hotel lobby. You know? <laughs> what? Yeah, like, I don't know why he was there every night, but he loves hockey. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it's good. And my family knows they get it. It's like they're pushy and they understand what, what you know, because no one's going to care unless you unless you win. So, you know, all this stuff, like, doesn't matter unless you win. And, yeah. we, and we knew that as a group. And guys stayed focused for sure. How nice was it uh, when you hugged your dad there at the end? 
talk about an emotional roller coaster. Same with your mom as well. Mm-hmm. You, you talk at the very beginning of this episode of you know all the money they put into everything for you to, to be successful, and now you're able to reward them in, in this aspect. Uh, how nice is it to be able to give back to them and say, "Look, here you go. Oh, what you did paid off." Yeah, I, that's that's the thing. It all it all paid off, and it all paid off even before the cup. Just being in the NHL and, and living living my dream. Um, it all paid off, but I think it's just a little bit extra, uh, you know, hugging, hugging my, my family. Uh, you know, like I said, especially my dad, you know, he was, that was a hockey relationship for sure. Um, you know, he spent a lot of money, you know, he didn't have the money to spend as much, uh, as much as he did, you know, we'd go to Toronto, Montreal to play in tournaments. I think I mentioned that last time uh, yeah, I was on CN just, rail. Like yeah. He worked for CN yeah. and. And that was big for me as well, just going to those tournaments, like realizing how, how good I actually was. You know, I was good here and, um, you know, but 10, 11, you go there and you're good there too. So that kind of, you know, pushed me even more. And uh, that's expensive, man, going up there, hotels, flights, the, everything, paying for me to play, uh, everything. So, uh, yeah, hugging him was, was so cool. Seeing him with the cup, uh, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, that's unbelievable. The, so the I guess the big question is, I got to ask this so people stop messaging us. When uh, when is the cup coming here, and w- what's the plan for the parade and, and everything? I'm not gonna say when it's coming here. No, man. come I'm on. I'm not gonna say. No, I got the date, but I'm not saying. So, uh, so how are you gonna do it? A couple weeks before, oh, come on. so I still got a little bit of time. Uh, <laughs> but I'm gonna have a parade. Yeah, uh, my mom used to work for the city, so she's meeting with the mayor and. Uh, mayor schmayer yeah <laughs> all right uh yeah just trying to figure out the the routes and everything so uh hopefully hopefully some people to come out for it uh, what are you talking <laughs> about What's going down? Hopefully, hopefully it's like denver a little bit so uh <laughs> no i mean it, i'm excited to to have it here and i'm doing it in halifax uh, okay great so you just won't give us the date but yeah you, you, okay. i'm doing it in halifax around like the the hill and brunswick street yeah, yeah, yeah. and around the, the the city hall square stuff like that so it'll be in that area you know i play junior obviously right there and for who <laughs> <laughs> yeah just the, yeah um so i played junior there obviously and you know there's been i think there's been four parades in Cole harbor which is sit at three and i think depenta had one as well in 07 so um obviously Cole harbor means the world to me i just you know so does Halifax, I guess. Yep. Playing junior here, I have a strong connection with the city. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do it here. Uh, spring, I think Spring Garden area um, won't be too too long, I don't think. But yeah, I'm excited for for people to come out and, and check out the cup. How do you feel about the sign in Cole Harbor? That's uh, I, I put it out on our Instagram. That that must have been on the bucket list to have a sign there saying <laughs> yeah, your name. Like you must like, feel good. I don't even want it up there. You Why know? not? <laughs> just, what are you talking about? No, I know. It's it's cool, man. Want. It's cool. It's cool. Uh just uh, that was Sid's sign forever. So was, <laughs> is he rattled about it? What did he no, say about it? He likes it. He <laughs> loves it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I finally got on the sign. I made it now. What did he say? No, he thought it was great. He did thought, he? Yeah, he thought okay. it was great. Oh no, he's not He's not getting mad about a sign, that's for sure. I can't see Sid getting upset about anything. No. Right I'm below there. him on the sign, so I think he's cool with that, you know? <laughs> yeah. I got to get, like, three more cups to get above him, maybe. <laughs> oh, no, there was tons of... They, there were a bunch of people who were like, oh, it's Photoshop. They're like, oh, no, they misspelled something. Oh, no. Like, everyone was just, like, mimicking it. I'm like, Dude, give the guy a break. He yeah. just got a sign up there. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> no, it, it, that's... Uh, it, it's, it's, it's the summer and eight. What, uh, what's yeah. on the agenda from now until when do you go back to training camp? I don't even want to say the word training camp. Oh, I know, man. Um, well, what's the uh, plan from now till then? Just training and skating a lot and... Um, sauna? Yeah, saunas and hanging out, hanging out with my friends and family and uh, go back. I still got it probably like seven weeks, six, seven weeks. So, um, yeah, I'm just chilling, man. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, the up and coming uh, talent from Nova Scotia. We always like to, to hit it on the head when you guys do those skates. It's awesome that you guys bring out some some great talent. Uh, I guess you could say the next ge- generation of NHL uh, players. Are, you're so busy in Colorado. Do you take time to I guess like notice the other people from around the Atlantic provinces that are coming up? Hence New Hook right in your locker yeah. room now. But there's so much. Do you ever take a second and look around? I do. I, I think you just hear about guys that are coming up in, in the queue in college and things like that. Um, we skate with a lot of older older guys. Um, said the same guys for 10 years, you know. Um, some of us. It's been like 10, 11 years we've been skating together every summer, so it's been pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, I definitely hear about them and uh, don't have a ton of names on the top of my head. But it's all good. Yeah. 
No, that's yeah. They're all trying to get out to the skate for you. Yeah. So you'll, you'll see them eventually. I'm strict with who comes out, so they got to earn it. Yeah, that's what everyone's saying. Oh, You're yeah, strict because yeah, yeah. yeah, you got to go. Like you got to work. It's uh, yeah. Like we'd rather have less skilled players that just battle and work hard than. You know, if you don't work hard, you're not, you get one chance at the skate. And if not, you're out. I heard a story. I'm not going to tell you the name of a guy who was there and he was tired and he wanted to take a knee and he was next to you. And he just didn't take a knee because you were next to him. There's no knees. No knees. <laughs> no, but yeah, the, the, those skates are. Ian used to come out. Ian used to come out. Did what you? was it? Uh, 20, uh, <laughs> 20, what was that? 2013 at the what, four? What'd you say? I got two skates in the <laughs> I had to cut him. Was I had this to back when you were in the queue? No, he was in uh, Salzburg. Oh, right? yeah, with Red Bull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had to cut his ass, yeah. Jesus Christ. I had to cut his ass, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, no, what was I going to ask? Oh, I had a great question lined up. Oh, yeah, golf game. How's it looking? It's okay. What? It's better when uh, you, you don't go very far in the playoffs, I think, your golf game. Uh, I don't play much during the season anymore either. I just my back it's tight i just don't do it but probably played like eight nine times so far yeah. uh, this summer and yeah love getting outside and playing so are you a bump and run guy or do you pull the wedge out if you're on the fringe i uh, pull the wedge out. Yeah. oh do you yeah i wouldn't probably take, yeah. probably shouldn't but i do yeah i do interesting yeah. i took you for like an eight iron bump and run guy. <laughs> oh yeah yeah i don't know why 75 year old yeah just playing it safe yeah. i don't know this is me every time i get under it it goes you know, I, yeah. I, I hit it all no i got some hands on me though man do you yeah i do <laughs> they translate to the greens for sure <laughs> yeah that's true hockey it translates i picked it up too i've seen your hand so it makes sense while using eight iron when have you seen my hand this long time, time. Long time. <laughs> couple moose camps man saw you out there oh yeah before you this guy you paved the i was way. 22 before you, you. The way. i was 22 before you <laughs> I, know, I, know. I was 22 were you? No, I was no, no I was 27 no. before yeah. Drew N. That's what it was. I was gonna say my my boy J Jared, Jared. Jared Grant. Yeah, yeah. he's 22. Cause he, uh, what does he get? Hockey cards with uh, it'll say Nathan McKinnon with his picture. Yes, I've seen he that loves, before. He loves those. He loves those. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. He was at Armview the other day. I was talking to him. Yeah, yeah he's a great guy. Yes, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, 22. He loves, he loves that. Yeah. Man, with the cup coming, you got to think. One day, I don't actually. I don't want to say it. I don't want to jinx it. What's up? No. You're not going to say it? You can say it, man. You sure? Yep. Retiring the number in Halifax. Oh. Should I not have said it? No, that's fine. Um, that's fair. It's up to Cam, yeah. No jinx there. It's up to him. and It's just hard to, to do it. Um, I'm gone usually when their season starts and ends, but figured out one time. That'd be cool. When yeah. Ramuski did it, they flew Sid in. Mm -hmm. Or Sid probably flew himself. It was like mid-season, yeah. yeah. So maybe something like that. And whenever they want to, I'll definitely make it work. A hundred percent. No, that'd be a, that'd be a great, uh, a great thing. Yeah. We've got season tickets this year, so hopefully we'll see it happen. Yeah. Absolutely. Not this year, but eventually. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Um, how much time are we at right now? Uh, 43 minutes. 43 minutes. Um, I had one question about the, uh, hotel room. 87. What was the first two numbers? 1787. Did you ever talk to your travel secretary? No. No, no, no. That was completely by chance. How confident are you? And you're just, you're sure. I'm positive. There's no way she would know like that. Like, okay. She's not like a, yeah. Like she wouldn't even think of that to like, oh, Nate, you know. Like Nate, Nate loves Sid. Let's yeah. Him in like, this room. yeah. Like whatever. Like, because Cogliano um, and Sid are really good friends as well. Cogliano used to come down to Halifax like years ago and train and skate with us. Yeah. Um, and I showed him and he just started laughing. Like, And that's why he brought it up when I was doing my interview. So then Emily Kaplan asked me why. I'm like, oh, I guess I'll tell the story. And <laughs> just when everything was going on and we saw 1787 and Cogs would call Sid our spirit animal. <laughs> that's what he'd say. It's like Sid's our spirit animal. Like, And uh, I, I got the room and we just started laughing like, yeah, it's over. It's over. Yeah. It's, over. it's all. It's all over. I called Ian too. I told him like that. What was it like the day or day of day of the game or day of the game? I said, yeah, it's over. It's all over. It's a wrap. The confidence. It's all, on you. The whole team though. That's how we felt. Like it's so, a, everyone knew the whole. You told the whole team, hey, boys. Nate's in nineteen eighty seven. Uh, no, no. Just like we all knew that we were gonna win. Like I said, I think, and we just felt really good. Yeah. But uh, yeah, with that with that room, I would. It's like, yeah, it's a wrap. That's it's awesome. Wrap. Yeah. That's a crazy thing. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was great. It was great, and uh, yeah, Cogs is such a funny guy and super inspiring guy. And uh, with that speech and just 
the little superstition things. And he said his daughter that day at the, she went to the zoo and picked out a pet penguin as well. I don't know. He was just like, read randomly? Yeah, randomly. There's like every animal in the world is at the zoo gift shop and she picked a penguin and was playing with it, I guess. He that was is saying. true. There is a lot of animals. There is, yeah. And uh, just funny stuff like that. You just get little omens and yeah, it was just funny. And he handed you the cup? Yeah, I wanted it that way. Yeah, I wanted it that way. And uh, Gabe gave it to EJ and then Cogs got it next. He's been playing forever. Um, he was playing with like a... His hand, it was completely fractured he had surgery and taping his fingers together and just just such a warrior um that was probably one of the best parts too just seeing a guy like him raise it eric johnson raise it gabe um you know kemper jack johnson like older guys who's never who've never won it and have been through so much over a thousand games um that was that was probably the best part of it all for sure that says a lot about your character being happy for other people man yeah that's awesome you just see what other guys go through and um i i really wanted to get a picture of me and cogs handing me the cup and yeah I, I i respect him so much and um you know he's not the most skilled guy in the world but <laughs> he's the hardest worker uh yeah probably one of the hardest workers i've ever seen and and will do anything and and he you know, uh, you'd never think uh, the fourth line left wing guy is inspiring the whole team, but that's yeah. that's how it works. Um, I'm not sure about other sports, but in hockey, um, it doesn't matter how many points you get um, to lead, and that was really cool about our team. Um, he had the Ironman streak as well. For he a did, bit. yeah, he did. He got suspended. Oh, it was a yeah. gutty suspension yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, not a great suspension, but uh, yeah, he he's a uh, he takes care of himself and he's he's dialed in. So that's awesome. Um, when um, throughout the year, Sab and I work out at the same gym, and we pretend we're Joe Sackick when we see each other. We're talking about like moves Colorado should make, <laughs> like things. To hear should, what he thinks? Yeah, Nate should, his line, his his number should go down a bit. He shouldn't be playing that much. He's got to wrestle. Like, we just we were trying to we were trying to be Joe Sackick. <laughs> yeah. So throughout the year, do you think Joe did a obviously he did a tremendous job? But were you uh, happy with everything at, at the deadline uh, throughout the year? The I guess the trades. Did you got what would you guys do at the deadline? Who'd you bring in? Lekkinen? Yeah, he yeah. brought in Le Le Lekkinen, and Cogliano, uh, Manson, and uh, Nico Sturm. So so when this is going through, uh, I guess, you know, the trading deadline, do you have any input on this? Uh, a little bit, not much. Yeah. I mean, they'll just ask me about guys, what I think about them. Um, I don't know who we're trading for them, but um, I asked, well, I did ask for them to get Cogs. Did I, you? I asked for that because um, wow. I know him and I know what kind of person he is and just from training and he trains with Andy O'Brien as well, so I met him, known him for ten years. Shout out to Andy. Uh, yeah, shout out to Andy, and uh, so yeah, I asked for him, and that would I know it wouldn't it wouldn't be much to get him. You know, he's he was on a one year deal with San Jose, and they were out of the playoffs, so that was easy. And he asked uh, about Manson and uh, and uh, Lekkinen, and well, I thought they were great players and turned out to be awesome, and they're way better than any of us even expected them to be. Yeah. Um, you know, Lecky had three or four winning goals, clinching the rounds, and uh, Mance had an OT goal and was just a, just an animal out there and playing big minutes. Um, big boy hockey. Yeah. You guys were playing we big need, boy we hockey. We needed a guy like Mance so back there. Um, we got a lot of skilled defensemen, Kale, Taser, and, and Bo in our top four, and we needed, we needed – um, um, little meat, you know, and we we have JJ and EJ as well. Um, but we needed that guy was playing twenty night and and we'll and we'll bury guys because um, when you're, when they're on the ice playing against him, when I played against him, he'll he's he's physical man, a little dirty. Uh, <laughs> you don't like playing against him, but you love him, have him on your team, and we needed that sort of missing and just awesome ads by Joe and in, in, in the team. Um, yeah, he was all in and. Yeah, it was it was great that we didn't just add a one player or two. We added four guys, yeah. and it really made our team better. Going through those couple of years where you didn't win, did you? Ah, we need that key piece. We need a guy like Cogs. Is that where that experience came from? Of going, we need that one piece, and Cogs could fit it. Yeah, and our now our whole fourth line was so good. I mean, deep. It was it's so good. Cogs, Helmer, and uh, O'Connor. Some some games like they're they were being our our best line, and you know that forced us to up our game even too. You know. You know, we can't be getting no play by the fourth line. You know? <laughs> I was like, Landy, let's go, man. <laughs> like, what are we doing out here? So, uh, 
yeah, I love those guys, but we can't get outplayed by them. So, <laughs> love but, those guys. <laughs> but, but man, they were they were best line some night. They'd be buzzing in the ozone, making plays, giving each other tap ins. It was so cool to watch. Uh, and like I said, you need truly you need everybody to win, and we we had that. So special team. Yeah, it was fun to watch. Like I said, you you, you entertained a lot of people during those playoffs. You and the rest of the team. It was great. Yeah. One weird quirky question. Did you, did you uh, I hear in playoffs you get tired, you lose muscle mass, and people lower their flex on their stick in order to get a quicker shot off. Did you lower the flex on your stick at all during the playoffs? I didn't, no. No? No. Um, I have a tough time switching anything, so I kept it. I didn't lose any weight either. It was, uh, we actually had a lot of breaks because um, we swept. I had like, Eight, nine days. Uh, and then we slept again in the third round. So we had another eight days. So plenty of time to rest and regroup. Dude, I knew we had a good answer with that. He's like, eh, I wasn't a huge fan of the time off. I would have rather just get right back in it. How did you feel about the time off? <clears throat> I think it was good later in the series. Um, I'm kind of like new. I'm, I'm a big rhythm player. And I like playing every other day and staying in a rhythm. I, I found Tampa was a little tough the first two, three games to – to get my timing back a little bit. Um, and then after that, I felt really good. Yeah. And, you know, I had great legs the whole series, though. So it's – you just never really know. But at the end of the day, you're not going to extend a series just so you have less time off. You know, you're going to win it whenever you win it, and that's it. Then you just deal with the time off. Yeah. So you're not going to go the other way with it. Yeah, that's true. You know what You'd I mean? rather – just I'd rather sweep than go seven, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, know. that's fair. Yeah. Um. How much time? I don't want to keep. Uh, 51 minutes. I don't want um, the the time change. I remember last time you came here, you were in. You just got back from the bubble, and you guys were playing at noon, and you guys were pumped. You, you were pumped. You're like, I love the noon games. I hate playing at nine o'clock. What time were the games at yeah. in Colorado? Um, they were on at like ten o'clock here. They were on. Uh, no, they were on at six in Denver. It was eight o'clock Eastern six, seven, every night. Nine, so you're four hours behind us. Uh, no, three. Three hours behind. Sorry. No, they'd be at like nine nine thirty here. The games. Where are they? Well, I guess by the time yeah. the national anthem, though, yeah. you guys were. They were like always yeah, no, six. It was, it was eight o'clock Eastern every night, so nine o'clock here was like the supposed start time. So probably like eight fifteen Eastern. Um, but on the road, it was always at eight. Uh, so a little late. Yeah, a little yeah. late. I, I like it a little earlier at six, but it's all good. No yeah. worries. You, you were pretty amped up for those games, so it didn't really matter. That's the thing. Everyone's playing at eight. Just a long day. You know, you're in a hotel room for like eight hours just trying to get ready to go. Just not sleeping a wink, you know. What do you do? I don't know. Read or watch a show and call Ian. <laughs> <laughs> call the big fella. <laughs> so... Not a lot. It was uh, it was a long day to get ready to go. I get some treatment from the guys, get my body ready, and uh, yeah, it was just long days. Yeah. One thing that you're looking forward to this summer about ex- uh, obviously you're gonna have the party at the house, your place. What are you looking forward to most about celebrating it with your friends and family? Like, what's the one thing like you're just like pumped to do with the cup, other um, than the parade too? Yeah, uh, I think just. I've seen it. I've been at Sid's parties and I've seen how excited everyone gets to just to see the cup and touch it and get a picture with it. And yeah. um, it's such an amazing thing to see in person. It's it's way cooler in person. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's truly, truly amazing thing to, to be a part of. And the best part is sharing with everyone else. Um, you know, if you win it alone and be alone, it's not it's no fun. And having friends and family see the reactions and uh, see how happy they are is I'm looking forward to that a lot. Last question before you go, it, not even in terms of hockey, in terms of business, in terms of relationships, in, term of, in terms of anything in life, of getting to a goal of where you want to be. What's one piece of advice you would give to that person in order to obtain their goal to reach the, the, the peak of the mountain? Um, I, think, I think just resilience. Um, you know, and I, that was kind of the, our team theme in our run uh, was resilience. And I think everyone's going to hit hit a some adversity at some point in their lives. And, um, you know, I just think to, to keep a, a good mentality going forward and and whatever you do, especially for young hockey players, uh, you're going to face it. And, um, it's not always the most skilled guys who make it as well. Uh, just being a great teammate, um, having an awesome attitude. I know it's cliche, but it's, it's true. I mean, you, you'll rarely find a guy with a bad attitude in the NHL. Um, and if there is one, no one likes him. So Mm -hmm. I think, 
those are the biggest things that I've taken away because I've you know, grew up playing a lot of guys with and against that had bad attitudes that were really good and they just kind of fizzle out. And um, so I think, yeah, that's that's the biggest thing I, I would give. Awesome. Nate, you're the man for coming on here. I really... Uh, no, thanks for having you me. You know, you could have went anywhere in the world, but you're here in, in yeah, my Yeah, first in my interview studio. I've done, so... Since the cup. Yeah, like on ice stuff, but I haven't done anything. That doesn't count. No, no, it doesn't count. It's my first one. So, so uh, you know, I, I appreciate this. Yeah. I'm going to the cottage right now. I'm going to sit on the dock, smoke a cigar. <laughs> yeah. I'm pumped you're here. It's, oh, uh, it's going to be a great weekend. No, boys. I love it's going to be here, sick. So thanks a lot. Awesome. Um, everyone listening, thank you very much uh, for tuning in once again. This is going to be coming out Monday, so enjoy your week. If this interview didn't motivate you, I don't know what does. So, um, <laughs> like I always say, have fun, work hard, uh, and maybe you'll be a cup champion just like Nate. <laughs> All right, we're out. Peace.